Hey, what's up? This is Václav here. Well, here. I'm not at home right now. I took refuge in the mountains. But it doesn't stop me to do my favorite thing, which is playing with home automations. And as you know, in the upcoming September release, there is this greatly improved visual editor for automations. And what I like to do is I like to uh, take its advantage and uh, tweak and improve my existing automations. But the thing is, it uh, only works for automations that we're creating using the uh, visual editor or that are stored in the automation.yaml file. And historically, I still have some of my automations uh, sorted in the packages together with all the other legacy YAML configuration. So I need to change that. Let me show you how it's done. So I have opened the automations and as you can see, I only have one single long list with all the automations. Quite messy. This is, by the way, one of the reasons why I was using packages so I could organize things that belong together neatly in a one container. But I could do it here in automations as well. The way I could do it, I can filter them, for example, by area. To configure this, just go to the more info, go to the settings and then configure the area and click update. So this is one thing sorted, but when I click on the automation and I try to edit it in this uh, new shiny uh, visual editor, it doesn't work. It tells me that the automation has to be stored in the automation.yaml file. So let's fix that. I'm going to go to the package file where the automation is defined, select it and copy it into my clipboard. Then I'm going to press command or control forward slash to command it out. I don't want to delete it yet. I can do it later. Then open the automations.yaml file, go to the end and uh, just paste it. Now I need to tweak the formatting a little bit. So I'm going to select what I just pasted and decrease the indent and then uh, remove the automations header because this whole file is automations. I don't need this line. Then let's check the configuration. I'm going to go to developer tools, check the configuration. And yes, it's valid. So I can reload it and then go to the automations filter out so I could uh, click on it and see if I can edit it. And yes, it works beautifully, so it was pretty easy, wasn't it? I could probably end the video here, but if you're not new to my channel, you know that I like to take things to the next level. At the end, the reason I moved the automation over was to use the new visual editor. So let's do that. I have those two automations, but they should really be part of the same logic because they're just turning on and off a light based on a motion sensor. So I will try to merge them together. Uh, they are triggered by two different events. So I will start by giving each trigger different unique trigger ID. So I will call this one stopped detecting motion. And whilst I'm at it, I can also rename the trigger so it's easier to work with. So I'll name it stop detecting motion. And now I will go to the action and I will uh, create a choose condition and I will only call this action if it was triggered by this trigger. So I will uh, call a triggered by stop detecting motion and now I will have to create the action. But I currently cannot move the action call service turn line off. I cannot copy and paste it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it in the YAML and I'm going to copy uh, this action, move it down there below in the sequence and then just indent it. And I can move it back to the visual editor to see if it works. And it works nicely. If the trigger condition is met, then call the service line turn off. And I can also rename the condition so I know which trigger has triggered that. So I'll call it trigger stop motion. And it reads all nice. If trigger stop motion, then call service light turn off. So that's fine. So now that I have used the visual editor to edit the automation, I can go back to the YAML mode and uh, copy it. And then I can uh, go back to the other automation. There I will do the same. So I will uh, edit the trigger ID and uh, rename the trigger. Then I will add the choose action with the condition. And then I'm going to switch back to the YAML and there I will paste the other automation and I will start merging them. So first I will take the calling the service and move that into the sequence. Now I will take the trigger from the other automation and edit next to the trigger for this automation. So just copy it over. So now I have two triggers, each with a unique 
a different trigger ID. And now I can do the same with the condition. So I'm going to copy the condition uh, from the other automation and uh, I'm going to paste it in the choose sequence of our new merged automation. And now I can delete the other automation. I don't need it anymore. All right, so we're almost done. We have two triggers. Uh, we have two conditions. There is one more cosmetic change I'd like to do. Uh, I'd like to take the condition for the sun below horizon, so at night, and I'd like to only make it condition for turning the light on. I'd like to automation to turn the light off even during the day, but only turn it on automatically during the night. So now I have switched to the visual editor and I will rename the automation because it's not only turning the light on, but it's turning them on and off. And then I can save it and now I can delete the other automation because this automation is doing both. So uh, let's review it. So I have two triggers when it started detecting motion and when it stopped detecting motion. Then uh, I have a condition on this master switch for the light automation. And then I have the actions which are quite nicely summarized in the header, but I can click on it to open it. And there you can see the detail. If it was triggered by motion, then I'm checking if the sun is below horizon and then call the line turn on. And if it was triggered by no motion that I will uh, turn off the light. Now, one of the benefits of having the whole automation together is, now we can see how the whole thing works as one thing. To prove my point, let me open the traces and analyze it. As you can see, the last event is when it stopped detecting motion. So I will go back to the previous one where it uh, started detecting motion. So there is this condition for the master switch, which it passed. Then there is the choose condition where it will choose the trigger that started detecting the motion. Then again, it'll pass the condition on the sun below horizon and it will ultimately turn the light on. Now, after a while, it'll stop detecting motion. So again, it'll pass the condition on the master switch, but then it'll choose the other trigger when it's stop detecting motion and it will turn the light off. So that was a quick tip. Uh, I hope you liked it and I see you in the next one. Bye.